someone would come and build me.
hymn number 720, 720. Brightness is gone. It's the good memories of Christmas, the good tidings of Christmas, and that should see us through as Christians as we go through Lenten season and Easter eventually. With the lights gone, all the joy gone, families returned. Some of us feel left out. Some of us feel abandoned. Some of us feel neglected or forgotten. Whatever we feel, wherever we are in spirit with the Lord, we come to him to worship as we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come to God as we are. For the times that we have drifted away from God, for the time that we have forgotten our brothers and sisters, for the times that we've injured one another, let us ask for God's mercy and forgiveness.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Number 530, 530. Almighty ever living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I'll be glorified. And now the Lord says, Who formed me from the womb to be a servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him? For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, my God has become my strength, he says. It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may be reached to the end of the earth. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. 
Our response is, see, I have come, Lord, to do your will. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry. He put a new song in, into my mouth. Praise of our God. You delight not in sacrifice and offerings, but in an open ear. You do not ask for a holocaust and a victim. Then I said, see, I have come. In the scroll of the books, it stands written of me. I will delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your instruction lies deep within me. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O oh Lord. Second reading, the beginning of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to thee, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together, to all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The word became flesh and dwelt among us to all who received him. He gave power to become children of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, John saw Jesus coming towards him, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, for he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend as a dove from heaven and remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. There is one question that is normally never asked amongst Catholics. It's very common amongst Protestants. How did you become a Christian? Maybe that one is easy for Catholics, but if I was to change and say, when did you become a Christian? The Pentecostals or our brothers and sisters who have different ways of doing things, they'll tell you on 24th August, I was born again. I got to know the Lord. Okay, before that, what were you? We don't know. 
So today the readings show us a way on how different people get to know God. First of all, in the first reading, we, we are given a depiction of a slave and a master. If we go down history, the time some of us were born, the word slave was very bad. Servant rather, not slave. The word servant was very bad. I remember in the 80s, my mother, we had somebody who was looking after the yard. And my parents never allowed us to call him a servant. They encouraged us to call him by name. I remember his name, Samuel Matevele. I've never seen him after that. Probably he's somewhere, I hope. We were not encouraged to use that word because at the time, the word servant had a very bad depiction. Someone you can do anything you want to do to. Someone you can ask to do anything. It's more or less like people were owned. It was close to being a slave. But I'm sure things have progressed and changed with the coming in of human rights and with the coming in of people's consciousness. It's not always about rights. We always have rules and regulations. It's about people's consciousness. We ignore the rules. I ignore the rules. We find there's a red light, you look around, there's nobody, psh, you drive off. The rules are always there, but it's about our consciousness. That's why things are getting better, at least in this respect. So we realize there is this relationship of a servant and a master who creates this servant to be a light. Now think of it, from being a servant, somebody who's despised, somebody who's owned, and you are created to be the light of the nations. From being of low dignity, from being, not being recognized, you are created to be a somebody. There are many instances in life that makes us not to be recognized. It's not only poverty. It's not only status. It could be internal struggles that we are going through. It could be some challenges that we face, whether at work, whether at home, wherever we are, there are those instances in life that make us feel worthless, unneeded, unappreciated, unrecognized. Those are human needs. Human needs are supposed to be attained. We need to feel loved. We need to feel appreciated. We need to feel recognized. All those are supposed to be attained. But when they are not attained, we feel left out. Now, however, we realize that in the process of being in the process of being recognized by God as the light, we realize that at times coming to God, there are people who have helped us over the years. We are moving on to the gospel. We see Jesus Christ is God. We are celebrating Christmas. What did I do on Christmas Day? I slept the whole afternoon. What did you do on Christmas Day? Probably you had barbecue, you had families to visit, and all those things. So we realize there is this Christ who was born, a son of God, and then he's coming, nobody knows who he is. But John points him out. Behold, the Lamb of God. Then everybody else's eyes are open and they look around, probably somewhere saying, you mean this one? Are you sure it's this one? We have such situations in our lives. We are helped to see God through others. How did you become a Christian? A small story of a little boy who was born some time ago. His journey about being a Christian. 
First of all, he went to church because the mother was sending him to church. And then the interesting part was they would give that the offertory money. Well, that boy is me. Let me just be straight on, on the point. That boy is me. So we would go to church. Mom would force us to go to church and give us money to do offertory. As kids, you are taught to learn these things. So let's say she would give us an equivalent of a dollar. On our way to church, we would pass through the market and get the money changed into cents and then take for offertory one cent, the rest of it, it was for sweets. On our way from church, we were having fun, pockets full of sweets. And that was church for me. That's what attracted me to church. Later on in life, what I got attracted to was just to be mentioned next week, or Derek is sweeping the chapel or the church. I just wanted to hear my name in church mentioned. It never came until I was in high school in grade 10, boys' school, borders, when we had to clean the chapel, we had to do all sorts of chores at school. That's when I realized, okay, now I'm mentioned to say I am cleaning the church. What do we get from that story? We realize the journey to Christian, the journey of a Christian is not only about me, but it's also about seeing what is going on around us. If what is going on around us is edifying, is, bring, is, is, is bringing out Christ in the th environment, those that are looking and watching will be invited to where we are. If our behavior of being a student is inviting to others, are you only Catholics? I think you are not only Catholics. St. George's, we are not only Catholics, right? If our behavior is that which is encouraging, then we will attract others to the faith. But what happens, remember when I said, you mean this one, behold the Lamb of God, this one. Are you sure it is this one? What happens? There are times when you go to a new church and you meet someone and say, this one comes here, I'll never come here again. Yes. And even it's said of us priests, we are humans before we become priests, to be honest. It's the same with us. When there are three, four priests in front giving out, distributing Holy Communion, you look, oh, Derek is there. I'll go to the other priest. I'll go to Father John. Why? Because oh, Derek's behavior is not helping us to see God. Or Derek's behavior is not inviting us to come to God. Or Derek's behavior is showing you a different life which you are not attracted to. But Derek is supposed to bring peace, as we hear in the second reading from Paul. We are chosen to bring peace to those around us. Being a Christian is not for free. There is a task. We are Christians for others, not for ourselves. Look at the candles. Are they lit for themselves? No. Oh, they are lit for us to see. And that's what it means to be a Christian for me today, here and now. To be a Christian is an invitation not just for yourself, but to illumine for others to see God. By illumining for others, we are preaching and encouraging people to come to God, and by so doing, we bring peace. A parent might say, what do I do with my child who's always out? How do I preach peace? I need to ground him. She's not going for parties. He's not going to do all this. Yes. What's the purpose? It's the teaching. Peace does not always mean let it be whatever it is. No. Peace entails correction. Peace entails what we used to refer to as tough love. 
Christ fed a stud. Yes, two days or two weeks, you might not talk to each other, but the truth remains the truth. We don't normally love the truth. If I give you some of the truths that are behind here, you all walk out of the chapel now. We still sit on the truth. But we are called to be peaceful people, with, we, which includes giving the truth to those that should be given the truth. Tough love says, even if you love your child so much, please correct them. Is it Proverbs which says, spare the road? Catholics, Catholics, spare the road. Spoil the child. Yes. Well, we don't really mean the road itself, but there are many ways of having a road. There are many ways of correcting people. Things have progressed, but principles are still the same. We are called by God. We are chosen from wherever we are, from whatever we feel. We are accepted by God to be a light so that we can point others to God through our ways of life, and by having a good way of life, we bring peace to everyone around us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God. Believing in the Lord whom we've just professed, let us bring, now bring our prayers and petitions to God. Father, we thank you for the many symbols of your presence among us. We ask you that we, in turn, as we become the light of the world, that may our shining bring others to you. Lord, hear us. Your prayers and petitions. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you listen to our prayers. We look to you for guidance and protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our offertory hymn, hymn number 603, 603.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, your mighty Father. We pray, grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks, the Lord our God. It is free, right, and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the, compassion, the, by the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its searching, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed and he himself took bread, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. <clears throat> and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
a mystery of faith, when we eat this bread, Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the serving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. George, St. Ignatius, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession your presence will rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Robert, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Graciously listen to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the whole world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Command and formed by divine teaching, together we sing. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another that sign of peace with a smile. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Blessing of what you do, and of blessing of the Spirit. Thank you. 
Our post-communion hymn is hymn number 627, 627. Let us pray. Hold us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is some parish announcement. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to announce that confirmation classes will start for those in Form 3s to Form 6. They will start tomorrow, Monday, and they will begin at 5.30. You meet outside the chapel. It's open to anyone who's interested. Thank you.
Grid for your participation. We shall continue meeting on the streets of Harale. Let us conclude our worship. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go and be the light to others. We stand and sing our closing hymn, hymn number 770, 770.